Hello? Hello? And I just have to check the audio because uh, I'm using this bloody microphone again. I think it's working. And by the way, I'm using a really shitty computer tonight, so it may take a dump. So if the whole picture goes black, don't worry about it. Just say, I told you so. Anyway, let's just see who we've got online. Hello, Davey. The heat is on. It certainly is. It's been a lovely day today, that's for sure. They reckon, they reckon it's going to be cloudy tomorrow. And I was hoping for like wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. I was going to check my weather app. Mm, Sunday. It depends where you are in the country, though. But it was 22 today. It's going to be like 19 tomorrow. 17 on Sunday. But we're in Cambridge here, so... Uh, Hello, Vivian. How are you? Yeah, it's it's going okay to be honest with you. The uh, the car show we went to last Sunday. If uh, Kevin and Dave are watching, and and you, Vivian, you were there as well. I haven't. Well, I've actually finished the video finally, but it's like all week I just haven't managed to sort of like get on it properly. And because it's like quite a lot of footage, it takes quite a lot of time to go through, and I just haven't had the time. And I've had to work today as well. So, but I finally got it put together and it's it's like compressing on the computer now, which is going to take about five hours. Then I'm going to upload it tomorrow. So you should be, get to see yourself tomorrow on it. So <laughs> it's not bad, actually. But anyway, nice to hear from Vivian. Uh, uh, fellow detractor. Face orange biting nails. Cat orange whistling, hand orange covering eyes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're making no no coherent sense to me. <laughs> I'm going to move on. Nathan. Yes, I'm good. Doing all right. Uh, yeah, the whole... Uh, oh, let's just get Steve Perry up. Hello, Steve. Wind blew the open curtain on a parked lorry and the, the buckets, the buckles, oh, the buckles on the straps smashed my windscreen, chipped the paint and dented bonnet and a pillar. Was that a lorry passing you on like the dual carriageway? Because I know a lot of truck drivers, they don't fasten them straps down properly, do they? And they could be flapping around when they're driving down the motorway, so to speak. And that's the kind of result you get. Did you get his registration number? Because they shouldn't be doing that. They'll get pulled over if they, if, you know, if, if the uh, officials or whatever see a lorry going down the road with the buckles flapping around, they'll pull it over. But yeah, I should think it bloody would be. Stefan, hello from Bulgaria. Hello. Good day. How are you doing? Use emojis. Uh. Hello, Paul. How are you? Good to see you on a Saturday night. Yeah, I thought I'd pull this one. I was I can't I couldn't do one Wednesday. I was just like too tired. Just uh this week has flipping worn me out. And uh look at my head. I tell you, all, all my, this, this was from last Sunday. All my skin is going to peel off my head now. It wasn't even that. It was a nice day last Sunday, but it, it was wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, but it wasn't that warm. I'm just walking around this bloody car show with Ramsey, and it's, it's like by the, by the time I got home and looked in the mirror, flipping neck, <laughs> I couldn't believe my flipping head. I thought, well, shit, if I'd be done, I should have put a hat on. Anyway, Paul, nice to hear from you. Hope you're good too. Right, mate, you got a license for for that stream, do you? Got a, got a license. Flipping up. Do you know what? I'll tell you something. The way this country's going, you will have to have a license to take a piss. So, <laughs> no, I haven't got a license for a live stream. Stefan, man, I have Mondeo Mark IV, two liter TDCI, and I got. Faulty climate control, and I was searching 
for days until I found that bloody pink cable from the fan module to the fan was broken. Hidden devil there. Oh yeah, they've, they've got a lot of the Mark IVs are still working on. I know a lot of some of the higher up ones are electronic, but a lot of the Mark IV one there is the heaters are done by cable. Anyway, the whole point of tonight's live stream, and I, I've actually made a small, it's a very small, dedicated video about this because it's something I've, I've meant to do like a long time ago, and it is to do with the Mark V Mondeo on the climate control. Whereas you will have hot air, I'll say hot air on the driver's side of the dash coming out the face vents and cold air on the passenger side of the dash. And you can't alter the settings. You can't get hot air out of the passenger side of the dash and you can't get cold air yeah, out of the driver's side of the dash. So, so basically you're stuck. You're stuck with hot air coming out one side and cold air coming out the other uh, or vice versa. And I have looked into this a while back, but I never actually got round to fixing it because other things got in the way and it got left and got shelved. But there was one car I had in and I started looking at it and I found that on the actual heater unit behind your dashboard, on, this is on the Mark V Mondeo, on the heater unit, on the driver's side, there's an electronic motor and that operates your heat distribution. And the first one I got in, I it wasn't working at all. I got a screwdriver up there and I tapped it. I got a hammer on the bottom of the screwdriver and I tapped the motor because it's quite high up on the heater casing and it started working again. So the heater was working fine after that, so I left it. But we had another car in a couple of days ago and it was it was permanent. It was like it was permanent hot air out of the driver's side air vents and permanent cold air out of the passenger side air vents. So I, I, I had a good idea that it was that motor again. And I know that on the passenger side of the heater, there's another motor which does your distribution, like from the windscreen to the face vents to the floor. So I know it was on the driver's side. So my mate actually done the job, but I just, I just filled a few bits when he had it all stripped out. You have to take the steering column out and you have to take the clutch pedal box out. Uh, as one mate was taking it apart, he said you can get the clutch pedal box, unbolt it, and just push it over to one side. But you've still got kind of limited room in there. So if if you if you don't want to struggle a little bit, it, if it was me, I'd probably take the clutch pedal box completely out. Then you can go straight up there, and there's two little five and a half mil screws that you undo and then this motor car and actually i've got this motor here i'll show you this is the motor so the actual the lighting in here is absolutely terrible i haven't got a torch but anyway that's what it is this piece of plastic here that wouldn't that would not come with the motor that that's a separate part but all it is is a, is a standard motor and what happens is you've got you've got a little like tab there a little notch there and you've got another like a link lever that goes that's inside your heater box which will dog into this one here and there's another lever that will dog onto this one here so when this motor operates it's operating two flaps and that does your heat distribution and all it is is this motor is dead it's died and it's stuck in one position. That's why you're getting hot air out of one lot, lot of your heat event, vents and cold air out the other one. So uh, changing that motor wasn't actually that bad a deal. It, it wasn't too bad at all. It's just a bit, little bit time consuming because you've got to sort of like take your steering column out. But I, as I would say, because my mate told me, when he bolted this back in, he found that he didn't have the little notch that goes in here wasn't dogged in properly. So you've got to be a little bit careful to get these in, this one in and that one on, both them levers on, to make sure that, and, and also, once you bolt the new motor in place, you can, it's best to connect your steering column back up to ignition switch before you bolt the steering column all back in and try it and make sure it's working. So uh, it will save you any problems if you have to unbolt it again. 
but that's it that motor itself i in the, i've left in the description below i've left the finish code and the part number for that motor uh, from ford tc harrison it was about around about 57 pound plus vat for that motor there are a few on ebay for like 35 pound which are apparently supposed to be genuine ones uh, but the actual part number i've left might not be good because i, I phoned forward and they had a bit of a problem with it but i gave them the finish code which I, i've left in the link below and that goes straight to that motor. They, they recognize it through the finish code so it's not actually an expensive motor but you see, it's like I've had so many people message me over the, the last few years about this particular problem. And I, I really haven't been able to give them an answer because it's, it's one of them jobs. I had an idea what was wrong anyway, but I've not actually done the job. So I couldn't be 100% sure. I didn't want to say, yeah, it's that, and then find out it bloody well wasn't. So, But now we've done the job and it's fixed it and everything's perfect on this car again. And we fitted a second-hand motor because we had a smashed up taxi. So we nicked, the, we nicked the motor off the smashed up taxi and put it on. And it's all good now. Anyway. <sighs> flipping egg, always flipping talking. <sighs> JD time. And that's going to be followed by a Corona beer. Now, the actual fact, I don't even like the Corona beer. When I go up Tesco's again, if they haven't got the Bex beer, I'm going elsewhere. In the price of bloody uh, food in the supermarket's gone through the roof. It's getting a bloody joke. <sighs> I tell you, that's got a kick to me. Bloody hell. Anyway, this, uh, I'll answer a few comments. Oh, how's the weather down there? It's been, the last few days have been nice, pretty nice. Today's been pretty warm. It's been like 22 degrees. Which I know, I know, I know. It's it's not. I mean, here in England, twenty-two degrees. It feels nice, doesn't it? Where I've just been a month ago, it was no lower than twenty-seven degrees, and during the day it was, and that was at night time. And during the day, it was a good thirty-four degrees every day. So, uh, can you imagine that if you ain't got air conditioning? <laughs> nice. I tell you something. Coming back here, I'm flipping shivering like hell. So cold. But now, now the now the sort of like sun's coming out. And we're getting some reasonable weather. I mean, I, I can deal with twenty two degrees. That's quite nice. But Steve, parked lorry, curtains left open to show it is empty. All oh, right. Well, the straps still shouldn't have been flapping around, should they? If the wind, I mean, if the wind can blow the flaps, you know, they they should be secured still. So. But seriously, good to see you and hope you had a life. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much, fellow de <laughs> detractor. Yeah, I've had a fantastic day. Do you know what I've done today? <laughs> no, which was a shitty job. I had to go to work today and I had to change a clutch and, and flywheel in a Mark V Mondeo. So <laughs> cheers. <laughs> I had a whale of a time. <laughs> But it was worth going into work because I had to finish the video on the very thing I'm talking about tonight, which I'm going to put out hopefully Sunday or Monday. <sighs> Bloody hell. Anyway, I'm going to move on because I'm getting a few comments here, so I better answer a few. Stephen, hope all's good. Any chance of a few Mondeo vids on the two litre TDCI? Euro five. So the, the Mark IV Mondeo. If I get anything that that's uh, the, the problem I've got, the good old days have gone. They're, they're over. Uh, where I am now, because I'm, I'm not down where I used to work, I'm up at the sales garage. I've got a limited amount of stuff I'm doing. And if I haven't got nothing, you know, Mark IV Mon Mondeo-wise, I haven't really got much going on with him at all. You know, I'm lucky to even touch one. I'm either doing Mark III Mondeos 
Ford Focuses or Mark V Mondeos. And it's like I'm looking for, for goddamn inspiration from somewhere for, for to find something that would be interesting to talk about. So uh, <laughs> if I do find something on a Mark IV, I would love to do Mark IV stuff, you know, if there was more to do. But I, I need to find something to do. That's the problem. But if I do, I, I, will, I will try my best. Uh, Dave, I know what you mean about your head. <laughs> I'm already there, damn skin everywhere. People keep looking so... So it's, it's a dandruff. <laughs> we'll put it this way. I took a shower tonight and it's like flipping. Yeah, I've got like, I maybe not see it here, but I've got like blotches. <laughs> I've done it before. I keep doing it. I keep doing it. I'll go out on a like, a, like the first day of sun in the UK and you'll go out and you walk around and think, what a lovely day. And then when you get home, you realize all your head's burned. Because I've got no hair, so <laughs> and then you've got to suffer the consequences of all your skin falling off. <laughs> uh, Paul, now my 2017 Skoda Octavia is on 234k. I'm going to, to looking for a new taxi soon. Would you recommend a low mileage Mark V? Take it up to 200k miles as my next taxi. Oh my god. I don't think a Mark V Mondeo going up to 200,000 miles would be that bad. I know that they will go up to 100,000 miles no problem. To get to 200,000 miles you you could be looking at a new clutch and flywheel at some point. Oh, after a hundred thousand, it depends how it was drove, and it depends what mileage you get it at. If it's a very low mileage to start with, when it's been drove sensibly, then you you possibly can make the clutch last. Uh, but you will probably be looking at things like an EGR valve taking a dump, uh, thermostat housing. You would have to replace your cam belt and water pump at a hundred thousand. I would do it at a hundred thousand. And then once again at 200,000. But if you're going to get rid of it at 200,000, then chances are you won't have that much go wrong. It's possible to get a faulty injector or a high pressure fuel pump go wrong. These things do happen. But a lot of the cars that, that we've had, they've done all right pretty much up to 200,000. It's just that once you get after like 100, 150,000 odd, you do start to get a, things, a few things going wrong, and then it starts to cost you a bit more. When you get to 300,000, then it costs a heck of a lot more. Uh, Mark, my Mark V has had this heating problem for years. Thanks, I can now change it. I'm, I'm putting out <coughs> a video, probably the... Probably Monday, maybe maybe Sunday, maybe Monday. I've already got the video done. It's only a short one, but it's, it's just showing the steering column out and the, the clutch pedal box out. And I put them. I tried to feed my phone through the dash, so you can see up on the driver's side of the heater box, so you can see where the motor is. And uh, but my mate who actually done the job, he he said to me that if he has to do another one. He won't take the clutch pedal box out. He will unbolt the clutch pedal box and use a cable tie to pull it over towards the throttle pedal side. So he reckons you haven't got to disconnect the, the clutch pipes or anything like that underneath the, the bonnet. He reckons he can do it. So that would probably save a lot of messing around. So, uh, But you can get up there and uh, unbolt this little motor and take it out. So, uh, but when I get that video out in the next few days, then you'll have a better idea of, of exactly where it is. So, yeah. And for what it's what it's on 60 odd quid or 60, 70 pound with, with a VAT. Might be, even if you've got one if eBay, if it was a new one and it's cheaper than four, then why not? It's worth fixing. So I know it's pretty, it must be pretty annoying driving a flipping car, especially if it's a taxi. 
and you've got passengers, and if it's winter time and, and it's got <laughs> cold air coming out of the passenger side air vents, you've got to shut them all off and you've got to sort of like divert, you've got to face your driver's side air vents onto the passenger side to keep them warm. <clears throat> Is the parcel shelf of the smash taxi perfect? Do you know what? I don't know. It probably isn't. I should think it's probably been taken. I don't think it's got a parcel shelf in it. Because we've stripped it. Anything good on it would have been taken. I'll have a look anyway, just in case. Uh, Adrian, hello. How are you? Good to hear from you on a Saturday night. It is now 8.21. I shan't keep this live stream going too long because it is only a quite a simple subject. Oh, I just wanted to get this one out here. 2006 chain. You are great, Alan. Well, thank you. I don't know why I'm great, but, <laughs> but thanks anyway. <laughs> uh, Adrian. I'll be going Philippines again in January till March. Fan bloody tastic. What part are you going to? Because I'm going back out there. Hopefully, it'll be a one way ticket. <laughs> yeah, let, let me know what part you're going to. I, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it out there. It's another world from here. And I keep thinking to myself, you know, and I, I've got so many plans for videos. You know, it's, it's like there's they're, they're, just think of the benefits of living in the Philippines, right? You've got no poll tax, I mean, council tax, poll tax, the same bloody thing. You've got no, uh, I don't know, you've got no cameras on the roads watching you every two minutes. <laughs> it's so much, it's, there's so many things out there you haven't got to worry about. I, I, I should make a video on this when I go back out there. My parcel shelf was broken when I got the car. Bent and the plastic hinge points broken. Yeah, well, well we get a lot of that. The, the little poppers on the side bits snap off, but they're, they're easy to replace. But the trouble is the parcel shelves. We get a lot of the parcel shelves where the two, like, bar bits that's supposed to slot into the side panels at the back they get broken and you can't really fix them so you have to get a new shelf for it or the parcel shelf has been had something too much heavy on it and it's, it's bloody broke it in the middle yeah i bet they ain't cheap to buy a new one and re re sunburn head peeling you need to buy a few white bucket hats as worn by glider pilots and keep them yeah, I, I should have kept one of the uh, the COVID masks in my back pocket, shouldn't I? I could have put that on my head. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I'm actually not not keen on this Corona. Uh, it's a bit. It's a bit strong. I like the Bex beer. But this is all I've got, so it's going to have to do. And it is Saturday night. So, cheers. Mr. Stephen. Hello. How are you doing? How are your girlfriend and her daughter go doing as you as are hoping to pop see you over in uk it was nice to see have kids got on so well together nice to see you live today and yes thank you very much yes sir uh, it's actually nice having kids around it's like uh you know it keeps keeps the place lively if you know what i mean <coughs> but yeah Everything she's doing, they're doing absolutely well, perfect, actually. Doing very well. Uh, anyway, 
Yes, Alan, mate, it's a Mark IV with with a five, 2010 just acquired it. It's 163 brake horsepower. Yeah, 2010, I know exactly what engine that is. That, unless it's, yeah, I think that's, that's the earlier type of uh, the two litre diesel. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've actually got one of them engines that go in your car, sat in the workshop. It's got a problem with it, so we had to change it. Lack of compression. But if I don't get any uh, Mark IVs in, and there's something like interesting to talk about, and I'll do it. It's just that I haven't had a Mark IV on the ramp for quite a while now, so uh, I'm kind of stuck on on what I, what jobs I get. Like Mon Monday, I've got a Mark V to bring in, which has actually been smashed in. It's got a smashed in wing and a smashed in passenger door. I've got to, like swap a few bits over. So. <laughs> I'm not getting much in the way of variety, if you know what I mean. Hello, Michael. How are you? Good to hear from you. Hope you're having a drink. Adrian, Tarlac City. Yeah, well, well, you've got me there because I ain't got a flipping clue where that is. I'd have to Google that one. So, uh, but yeah. In actual fact, I'm going to do that right now. Let's see. Oh. oh, I see. You are just above Angeles, Angeles City. You're just above Ang Angeles City, a little bit higher. So you're right up north. Well, I hope it's nice up there. I'm sure it is. Nice and warm. That's what, that's what matters. Nice climate. I'm on the other end. I'm down the southern end. <laughs> uh, Paul. And that was a great video of you and Tyler having a night. Good sing. <laughs> he he was sick twice before he actually sang that song. <laughs> he started singing. He was drunk. No, I think uh, next time I do that, because that was only sort of like quick. So the next time I have a, a karaoke out there, I'll do a proper one. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll get a lot more drunker and I'll go for it. But yeah, that was a good night. The missus is over there. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, I like it there. I like it very much over there. Can't wait to get back. <coughs> Damien. Getting my 19 play, Mark V Mondeo serviced in two weeks. Previously, you recommended replacing the fuel filter too. Is there anything else I should do? 30,000 on the clock. Damien in Sunny Bell. Hello there in Sunny Belfast. Well, if it's only got 30,000 miles on the clock, there ain't much it's going to need. Oil and filter. Definitely do the fuel filter if it's never been replaced, especially at 30,000, because it's only got a small filter, and they do block up quick. Uh, air filter if it needs it. I normally change them about 50,000, but it's up to you. I wouldn't bother with the pollen filter. That won't be blocked at 30,000. Check the brakes. That's about it. Not a lot to do on these cars anymore. Just a few filters. I mean, the oil filter and the fuel filter, that's the main things. So 30,000 miles, I mean, it's, that's nothing. It's not even running, is it? It's, it's still a brand new car. So now you won't need much doing. That should be a simple little service. <coughs> Michael, hello. I've got a 2.5 ST Ford S-Max Mark 1 08 Reg. 
petrol had few few fuel pumps in short space of time do they have to be coded to the vehicle and the fuel pump control module no you haven't got to code a fuel pump in a pump's a pump that's uh <clears throat> no you just fit the new pump and that's it but it's you know it, it, it is possible you can fit a new pump and it's faulty we get we get shit like that all the time happen and then you start to think to yourself is there something else wrong with the car but generally speaking no there's not it's, it's just the fact that you've got a faulty part it happens <coughs> uh, Alan, exactly this place uk is over or for it yeah i can't even say it authoritarian authoritarian now yes it is it's uh it's oppressive dirty horrible country now and i just want to get out as quick as possible the government have lied and lied and lied and it's no good saying well we'll vote for labor next time because the conservative party have nothing but told us nothing but lies flipping out can you imagine that keir starmer getting in i mean he, he's a he's a he's just a communist so he, he won't be no better he, he'll be no better he'll probably be worse than what we've got now all their lies over covid yeah i'll tell you something do, do any of you watch that richard robes because if you watch his channel, you would have known that he's, uh, they held that big conference in the European Union Parliament, where all them scientists from around the world all went to that European Union car, uh, Parliament, and they all had a big conference about COVID, the origins of COVID, and how it all started, and, and everything that's been going on. And uh, if you haven't seen that, you want to watch it, because it's very interesting considering that, you know, COVID was all this strange new virus. Well, it turns out they knew about COVID in 1965. They were experimenting with it in 1967 on people. They've known about it since the 1960s. So it makes me believe all along it was set, it was set loose on purpose. It's all been a big lie. Anyway, I shall carry on. Alan, just above Angeles City. Yeah, I've just checked it on Google Maps. So I've, I've just seen it. Uh, glider pilots sit in a greenhouse in full sun. So no hope. So know a bit about avoiding sun damage. Yeah, I should think they do. <laughs> Home. The, the dog hears the slightest thing and it is off. He thinks there's something going on. So, uh, Tarlac City. I've never been up, I've never been up north. The only place I've ever been is, is Mindanao. So, uh, you know, the funny thing is, it's, it's hard to imagine how far Mindanao is from, like, Manila. It's like, was it about two hours flight or maybe more to get up there? And that's in a plane. Now, it just shows how big them islands actually are. They do call it the Thousand Mile Island. Like I said, if you if you if you had to measure the distance from their islands, if you compared it to the United Kingdom, they would stretch from the tip of Scotland across the English Channel and halfway through France. So it's, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of land mass, really. North North Luzon, yeah. Uh, maybe we can meet up. Yeah, sure, no problem. If, if all my plans work out, uh, hopefully, I'll probably be over there by the end of this year. So October, November. So we'll see. 
Uh, Pants, hello. My air distribution motor ain't working. It's only blowing out of the face vents. Do you think it will be difficult to get the motor out as the fan housing is right next to it? Uh, I've not had the actual distribution motor pack up on a Mark V yet. So now you've got me. I should think the uh, you'd have to take the glove box out. And I'm sure you can get to it. I'm sure that whatever's up there, I know the fan motor can come out. That's not a problem. The actual motor itself. Any trunking up there or whatever, I should be able to get out of the way. You should be able to get to the distribution motor. It's no different, really, to the to the the, the the heat distribution motor, which is on the driver's side. So uh, I'll have to have a look. I'll have to have a look on our scrap car because I I ain't touched the passenger side. But I'm sure there's a motor up there. I'm sure you can get it out. I'm sure you would not have to take the entire dashboard out just to get a motor out. So. Uh, I will check that one out though, but I, I think if you get the glove box out of the way, I'm sure you can get in there and you'll be able to sort of like work it out. But I will find out anyway. Very warm, yes. I know when, when over here, over here in, in, in England, we, we complain about when we get a nice sunny, especially after the winter, we get a nice sunny day and it's lovely and warm. You say, oh my god, it's too hot, it's too hot. <laughs> it's like <laughs> and then you go over there and it's like it's full on flipping heat. But it's it's not the fact that it's full on heat, it's it's like it doesn't let up, the heat doesn't let up, even at night time, at three o'clock in the morning, it's still like 27 degrees in the in the height, the height of the summer. And and when it gets to be like heat day and night, I mean for me, I mean it was starting to get to me a bit. But uh, thankfully, I think not all year round. It's it's not that hot all year round. So uh, it, it makes it makes you wonder. Here in the UK, when we get quite a warm day, it really isn't that bad compared to other places. <coughs> uh, a tame mechanic does it for me and checks pads life remaining hello kevin how you doing yeah i thought i'd pull a quick one tonight oh. <laughs> just so i could have a beer <laughs> can we get hope on camera give her a dog treat from me i'm not sure if she'll come here hope come here come here come here Well, this will get her in here. Come on. Up here. Come here. Up here. <laughs> Come here, Hope. Come here. Up here. Come here. There. She's she's got a treat. She likes them. They're uh they're sm they're called schmackos. Anyway, nice to hear from you, Kevin. I'll have that car show video out tomorrow. It's compressing now on the computer. Finally got it done. It's like I thought I was never going to get it finished. Anyway. Uh, Roberto, hello. My Mark V 2015 have the same problem. Too hot and unable to change the heat distribution. Where is the fault command? <laughs> you don't you don't have to give it a command. <laughs> you just have to change you just have to change this. <laughs> I command you to put cold air out of the goddamn driver's heat vents. Do it. <laughs> 
don't worry, Roberto. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a, a video out tomorrow, so you'll see you you will see where this motor sits in your car and how to change it. And that's all you've got to get is a new one of these motors. You haven't got to program it in or nothing. You just fit a new motor, and that's it. It will work. Hello, come here, come here. Hello, Sam. How are you? Doing fine. <laughs> Good to hear from you. Oh, come in. Come in. in. Starmer is much better as he was a solicitor and is fantastic what well, Keir Starmer are you kidding me he's a communist do you, do you know what I can't I cannot but I think if he gets in power apart from boring us all to death because he's bloody boring I, I think he would take this country in a well he would open the borders even more wouldn't he because he's all for that he wants the whole world to come into the UK so they can get all their cheap labour. But I don't think he would do a better job. Well, how can I say a better job than what the Conservatives are doing? Because they're doing a shitty job anyway, aren't they? I don't think he'd be any better than what we've got now. I really don't. I could be wrong. I gave up on Labour a long time ago. Labour used to be the party of the working man. It's not anymore. It's communism. That's what's creeping in with people like Keir Starmer. And the Conservatives, they're no better. They're all out for themselves, what their own personal gain. They're all bloody liars. I shan't be voting for any of them, not these two main parties, none of them. I'll tell you what, some people might not like it, but I like listening to Nigel Farage, because at least he speaks the truth. And we are living in that age where the truth is a big lie, isn't it? No one, want, no one wants to hear the truth anymore. Everyone keeps getting fed lies and just accepting it. So I have totally lost faith in the entire political spectrum in this country. Nothing they say, they, they come through on. Uh, yes, me too, Alan. I'm off to Philippines in the next couple of years. If you need any info on the visas in Philippines, just ask, mate. Yeah, I'm going to have to go down that whole route, route and I? I know you only get a certain amount of time and you've got to get a visa. Oh, my God. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I've got all that fun to sort of, like, work out. So, uh, yeah. See, see, this, this is this is a thing. If you go over there, they're very tight on immigration. You know, they want to know who's coming in and who's going out. And if you overstay, if you overstay over there, when they catch you, they'll deport you. No two ways about it. They'll deport you. It's just, it's just like the the drug war that was over there. They went around and they shot them, didn't they? The dirty gave the order. If, if it's your drug dealer and you want, if you're going to resist the rest, they'll shoot you. So uh, they don't mess around. Uh, M. Hussain, hello. Hi, how are you? I learned a lot from videos. Please, can you on Mark Five oil leaks at back of engine drips onto my exhaust where it could be leaking? No, oh there. I would say it depends on what mileage your car's done. If it's under 100,000 miles, I would say chances are it's coming from the uh, high-pressure fuel pump. There's a cob unit the high-pressure fuel pump goes into, and there's a gasket behind that, that cog unit that tends to leak, and it runs down the back of the engine. But you'd have to have it looked at, because we also have cars that, a lot of them cars, they're, they're 
when they get the more higher mileage on them, although we have had them just over 100,000 miles start leaking, that from the rear, not the rear main oil seal, but the end uh, crankshaft main bearing cap, there's a couple of rubber seals that run either side of that main bearing cap that shrink and the oil flows past them and starts leaking between the engine and gearbox. And that's an expensive job. Not in parts it isn't, but it is in labour. So it's, it's one of them things you'd have to get the car on the ramp and actually have it looked at properly, have it cleaned down, and then you can actually watch the oil come out if it's that bad. So uh, there, there are a number of, of places that the oil leak can come, can come from. So I can't say for definite it'd be one place or the other. You'd really have to look at properly. Just organised a new windscreen for Transit Connect. Oh, you got a broken windscreen. You know, I, I, I fit windscreens. I quite like fitting windscreens. It's calmer. It's, it's, it's nicer. Nice. I, I quite like doing them, to be honest with you. The only windscreens I... I don't like fitting windscreens in bloody focuses, though, where they've got that bloody encapsulation around the outside of the glass, uh, rubber, because it's got like a metal in it. And the bloody cheese wire I use keeps snagging on the metal. It makes life hard getting the screens out. But, do you know, I, I do all the Mark V Mondale windscreens. They're lovely. They're well easy. See, we, we, we buy our own windscreens. We just go to the windscreen place, buy the screen, and put it in ourselves. Saves a hell of a lot of money. Uh, Michael, thanks, Alan. Just... It's fine on tick over. Soon as it engine heats up, when you drive, it's it's soon as you put your foot down, it judders, then dies. Code comes up, fuel pump again. Yeah, sounds like a. Doesn't mean to. Well, it might have a code saying fuel pump. It doesn't mean to say the fuel pump's faulty. You could have another different problem there. So without actually seeing it, it's uh could be a. <laughs> if this is the trouble. You, you can some. You might have a. It might be saying fuel pump. But like like I say, it might not be the fuel pump. It might be something else causing the fuel pump not to work. So uh, you need to get someone to do, like look at that properly and diagnose it. You can't just condemn parts and think that's because it, it, the code may point towards the fuel pump. And quite often, it could be well something different. I can see the motor. It's the first top motor, but the fan housing is right up against it. I'd have to have a go at it. Yeah, well, I'm sure that fan housing panel that's there would you should be able to move, unbolt it and get it out of the way. Uh, but I'll, I'll have a look anyway, because I've got, I've got a scrap car, so I can get under the dash on the passenger side, and I'll, I'll see what kind of job it is to do, and I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. There was time, 10 to 9. Uh, the best time to visit Philippines is from January to March, and I'm cold in the morning and cold at night. A nice time of the year to visit. Do you, know, do you know the reason I went in April was because I knew it was the height of the summer and I, want, I wanted to feel the heat. I wanted to feel the proper heat out there and now I've experienced it. And uh, I like it. It is a bit much if you haven't got air conditioning, but uh, I, I, I do like it. And I'm thinking if that's as hot as it gets out there, the rest of the year when it's a bit colder, it's you can live in it you can you can deal with it because i had like three weeks in, in in the heat and it was like we never had the air conditioning on all the time only only certain nights we had it on all night long when the air conditioning was on it was like oh that's nice but when it's not on you can wake up in the early hours of the morning and it's stuffy and and sticky and flipping uh you need to take showers a lot because <laughs> you do sweat an awful lot. It's like six o'clock in the morning. You go out for a walk and you're sweating because it's so warm. But, yeah. 
But yeah, that's a tropical country though, isn't it? That's, I mean, you've got to like the heat to live to live there, I guess, to, to move there. If you don't like heat, bloody hell, don't go there. <laughs> but it's like when you, when you get a bit older and you sort of like your bones start to wake a bit, you kind of like, you don't like the cold anymore. It's all right when you're younger, you can go out in the cold and freeze and, you know, build snowmen and all that when, when it snows. But when you have to work in, in the freezing cold in this country, it's not nice. And I know, you know, I have to fix cars and, and when it's bloody bitter cold and it's horrible. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm getting older now. So I, I like a bit of like sunshine. I like a long, I'm a warmer climate. Uh, Sam, cute dog. That's that's it's not my dog. That's that's Monica's dog. Uh, I'm just dog sitting for her while she's off. She's away at the minute, so uh, I'm doing a bit of a dog looking after. But that that's she's a good hope, a good dog. Uh, ever so well trained. The only the only toy that dog loves is a tennis ball. All day long, that dog. If you've played with a tennis ball with that dog, that dog will be following you all day long. It doesn't. It doesn't get get tired. <laughs> but it's, they're kind of like a sheepdog, aren't they? So they're used to running around. Uh, Alan, when you get back to the Philippines, will you keep your channel going? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it going. I'll, I'll have to change it. I'll have to change the the picture and the name and everything because it'll be obviously. Obviously, I won't be doing cars anymore. But uh, I'll be doing. I'll probably just be doing like. I don't know, day to day, whatever comes along. But yeah, I, see, I, I like making videos. It's it's just something I like doing. So uh, I've got a thing about cameras. I like cameras. I like making videos and pissing around with photos and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll definitely keep the videos going because whatever, whenever I see something interesting and I, I will, I'd love to have the camera with me. So uh, the amount of things I, I've missed that I would have loved to have filmed. So, yeah, I'll be making loads and loads out there, that's for sure. Uh, Mark, hello. Good to hear from you. TC Harrison Car Show, 10th of September. Can't you mention it in your next video? That's a... I've been there twice now. Well, you have as well, haven't you? Yeah, 10th of September. I'll make a note of that because I'll forget. Right. Sorted. Cheers, Mark. <coughs> Dave. Last Sunday's show was brilliant. Roll on the next one. Hope Kevin is okay. Looking forward to seeing the video. So many excellent cars. Yeah, there was quite a lot there. That was very interesting. I didn't expect it to be that big. <laughs> it was like it was like flipping egg. We're walking around and it's like, holy shit, we've hardly done a, a tiny little spot. <laughs> there was rows of them. Flipping loads of cars there. And motorbikes and bloody lorries and... <clears throat> Farm machinery and bloody hell. Because last year we went to Whittlesea and done the show there instead of going to the Ramsey one. So this year we've done the Ramsey one. Because I've never Kevin's been to the Ramsey one, but I've never been to the Ramsey one. So but yeah, that was that was cool. We had a lovely weather, as my head shows. And uh, yeah, that was a good day out. Uh, what about the, La the Labour MP flying to the USA business class and tweeting a photo? <laughs> well, I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't heard that myself, but that doesn't surprise me. They should be in economy class for the rest of us. Flippy deck. I can't, I can't afford a business class ticket. As in, as in flying as an MP and paid for by the Labour Party. Yeah. 
they're all the same. Well, probably 98% of them in, in bloody Westminster are the same, aren't they? They're all in it for themselves. Country's going to hell. And the visas are easy. Just abide by the rules and it's fine. You can stay a maximum of three years, then leave the country for 24 hours. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. You've got to fly out uh, and then spend, you know, I don't know, 24 hours in Thailand or somewhere, then go back again. So, yeah. Yeah, well, thanks, Adrian. If I don't uh, get any questions, I'll give you a shout. I'm, I'm, sure, I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll work it out bit by bit. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. I want to get a motorbike. I want to get a motorbike, and I'm going to go touring around Mindanao. That's what I'm going to do. So, <laughs> I've, I've got, I'm getting it all planned out already. I'm going down to General Santos, and then I'm going to work my way up back up to a Maramag. So, <laughs> that'll be a nice little trip. When I got the van, it had a catalogue of faults. Sam, I know exactly where you're coming from because I see cars on a daily basis with a catalogue of faults. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah, I can walk around the car with a piece of A4 paper and I can fill it up with faults. Just, just... And that's just going around the top half before you even put it up in the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. No bother, mate. Cheers, will do. First is alternator, brake, service, which is happening. Yeah. But you see, it's a van. You don't know how it's been abused, do you? It could have been abused quite a lot before you got it. You know what van, people in vans are like. Uh, thanks for the reply. Oh, I fixed oil leak at fuel pressure pump area and water leak, few other job. Thanks to you. I able to do it myself on a Mark 5, which done 170k. Now this oil leak is turbo area. I don't tend to have any leaks on them from the turbo. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We don't, mm, I've not had turbos leak oil. So, uh, it depends how bad it is. I've had the turbo, the hose, some of the hoses that go on the turbo, you can, they can get a bit damp with oil and you might need the hose clips tightening up. <laughs> but not normally it's the, it's either the, the, uh, high pressure pump seals that are leaking or, or it's the rear main end cap seals. Uh, I have a joint problem, so whatever the temp, it isn't good for me. Yeah, well, you know, if you've got joints, uh, the warmer the wet, the warmer the weather. I would say, well, I wouldn't say over the top in, in in heat, but I mean, if you've got a fairly nice warmer climate. That'd be better for, for, for joints than it would be in a cold climate. <clears throat> you heading away, Alan? Uh, quite possibly, yes. If all goes to plan, we shall see. There's, there's, a, there's a number of things that, that need working out and sorting out, and it's going to take a little while. So uh, if everything works out how I'm expecting it to, then I will be. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Cleverly's Cleverly's car show 11th of June. Oh, yeah, this this is the problem that there, there's shows all over the place, but it, it's it's finding. I mean, for me, it's and Kevin that it's finding shows that are not a million miles away from us. So uh, there, there's so much going on around here, so we just pick the shows that are kind of close. The question is, will Alan still be in the UK come September? 
Oh, I can answer that one. Yes. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because I'm not being a total miser here, but the cost of a flight in September is a lot more expensive than it is in October. If, if, I, if I said to you, if, if I took a flight in August, it would cost me, for two of us, it would cost us two grand to get there. If I take a flight in uh, October, it's going to be half that. So uh, the, the prices are, are quite significant when you, depending what month of the year it is, the, the summer months are expensive. Surprisingly enough, April or Easter is a cheap is a cheap month. December, I think no November and December, or especially December, are going to be very expensive because they know that everybody's going home, so they put the prices up. So if I do, I'm going to pick I'm going to pick the month that's got the lowest airfare. I don't see the point in paying an extra thousand pound for the same flight just if it's on a different date. I'll, I'll, I'll plan it out to, to coincide with the best dates possible. Hello, Curbside Classics. How are you doing? Evening all. Stephen, if you go live where girlfriend is, what would you do to for a job out there? Sorry to ask once again. What would I do for a job? <laughs> Sell myself? <laughs> that, if it all works, I'm not saying it will, but if it all works, that will all be revealed and you'll see. But I don't want to sort of like say, oh, this is what's going to happen, this is what I'm going to do and the other, because... Uh, it might not work out like that. So I'm going to wait until it happens and then I'll, I'll make a video of it and I'll show you what I'm doing. So uh, oh, <laughs> I can't, I can't say for the, for just, for just yet, but, <clears throat> but there is a plan in place. Uh, Mark traded my Mark Mondeo Mark 4.5 for a Cougar. You YouTuber Shifting Metal has done a video on my ex Mondeo. Ooh. Steve Perry, you're not allowed as a foreigner to work in the Philippines. That that's a good that's a good point. You can't you can't just go over there. You can't you know not 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 like this country where you come over in a rubber dinghy from France, but over there you can't just go over there and start working. You can't just get a job. You've got to jump through a lot of hoops before you can do that. So uh, yeah, Adrian is spot on there. If you go over there as a foreigner, you've got to be a bum. You've got to sort of like hang around for a little while. <laughs> Before you're granted your authority to work, which could take a little while. Phil, just clock 200,000 miles on my 2012 Mark IV, two litre. Oh, 163 horsepower, one day. Absolutely love it. Running like that's excellent. I tell you what, the, the 200, the Mark IVs, they do ever so well. They've done it. They've done better than the Mark Fives when you on mileage wise, and the, the least things going wrong with them. Uh, video is Mark's Mondale on sh shift tinting metal YouTube. I didn't buy a Mark Five Mondale having watched all the issues in your videos. That scared me off. <laughs> I suffer from sticker syndrome, so I have. Now got a blue badge. Oh, right, I see. Mar Marlon, hello. Ecuador. Bloody hell. 
well hello <laughs> hello over there in ecuador flippy nick i never knew this channel got so far <laughs> thank you very much for for dropping in on the live stream do you own a mark 5 ford bondeo or a mark 4 or any ford how old is tyler he's 16 years old he'll be 17 in september so uh yes uh, do you know what when when when, <clears throat> when i got him as as a uh, to come and live with me he was about five years old and them years have gone boom he, he was only he was only down here and now he's now he's taller than me I keep saying to him, it's, it's embarrassing, Tyler. You can't stand next to me anymore because you're taller than me. You're showing me up. <laughs> no, but he's a, he's a great kid. He really is. Uh, James, how many bonnet locks have you fitted to them sheds to mark, to focus? Oh, quite a few. <clears throat> yeah, quite a few. And... You know, the, getting the old, you've got to get the grill out, haven't you? I watched the video on YouTube where you have to use your screwdriver to, and you can hit the screws and break them and get them, get the grill out. Yes, so I've done quite a lot of them. They're a right flipping pain, aren't they? <laughs> They're not a very good design, that's for sure. Uh, Dave, hello. How I love, how I how i the love of my life monica not seen her for a while I'll, I'll i will try to get she's away at the minute she's gone back to her own czech republic for a little while so when she gets back i'll, I'll find a video and i'll get her in it so uh no, no worries we'll, we'll get her again my cougar has a two liter diesel engine is it the same engine in a mark 5 mondeo if it's a 2019, I would say it is. I pretty much believe it should be, yeah. Not that I've seen under the bonnet of a 2019 Cougar, but I, I should think it is. I know the earlier Cougars, they had the same engines in them that you were getting a, a Mark IV Mondeo. So uh, I should think it probably is a Mark V Mondeo 2 litre diesel. Had mine 14 years, never change, works great. At James Wright. At Dave, listen up, Monica is on holiday and Ellen is dog sitting. <laughs> Steve Perry, hope she's having a lovely time. Uh, what career will Tyler have in the Philippines? The plan is, just down the road from, from Maramek, there is a huge, and I mean it's a huge, uh, college. We intend to get a student visa for him, and he will go to that college, and he will learn a trade there. We want to get him into aeronautics, but... Whether he's in that, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna see what what kind of uh, trades they will do there, what we can learn, what courses he can take. But we're gonna try and get him on a proper course and uh, get him doing something over there in this college. And he'll do maybe four years in other college course. I don't know. We'd like to get. We'd like. I mean, Kenna wants him to be an airline pilot, or at least one of the one of the actual. Uh, the people who sit, who sit, you know, one of the maintenance people or something like that. I mean, Tyler's actually quite interested in, in, in uh, being an aircraft mechanic. But I see that this this college out there is absolutely, that they'll do a lot out there. They'll do a lot, of course. It's, it's a big, big college. So, uh, but we've, we've yet to actually go in, go in and say what, we've got, what they got. So uh, we'll find it out shortly. I love Fords, whatever they are, however, they transit is a rock box. 
Yeah, well, they always have been. I'm not so sure about these these modern ones, the newer ones, but uh, all the older ones, especially the Mark Sixes and anything below that, they're all rotted out quite badly. They don't make them a very good metal, do they? Trade equals tuck tuck repair. No, they've been <laughs> tuck tuck repair. No, I think we will sort of be giving that one a miss. Uh, Big M, hello. Hi, I found your channel when I needed to replace a wheel bearing on a Mark 1 Yaris, a real one. <laughs> it was a hard job on the driveway, but your video really helped me. You know, the, the first rear wheel bearing I changed on a Yaris, uh, I killed my arms doing that, hammering it, trying to hammer it off. And I thought, you know what, never again am I going to do that because I felt, you know, the arms ached for weeks afterwards. They turned to jelly hammering the bloody thing. Then we come, then we found the, the idea of, of getting that getting that bearing off. And it's like, if you've got thick enough bolts that are strong enough to push on the back plate, it, it, it works. And it, it saves a lot of aggravation. So, uh, yeah. Alan, cord plugs between spark plugs starting to weep from a focus. Yes, they are. They're very common. I don't know why. I mean, it's not as it I means surely the cars have antifreeze in them, haven't they? The antifreeze should stop the bloody water for bloody corroding the cord plugs you were for. But they are common. We have we have lots of them. Lots of them leak. It's annoying, you've just got to knock them out and drain the water, knock them out and fit some new ones. Doing PPL or glider pilot's license before moving should help. Yeah, well, there ain't going to be time for that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's all sort of like, we don't know who's going to be like a, an actual pilot. But... Uh, Something in aeronautics would be nice. The, the plan B was, it was a chemist. <laughs> but there's a lot of trades out there. It's, it's, the, it's the same old thing. It may, it may well be a poor country, but if you've, got, if you've got qualifications or diplomas or anything like that behind you, then you'll get a good job. Chances are you will get a good job. If you don't do any qualifications, if you don't go to college and do anything like that, you're not going to get a good job unless you're very lucky. So it, it's well worth, I reckon it's well worth spending a few years trying to learn something wherever you are. And it's, it's a lot of people from different parts of the world, India and places like that, they'll go to a country like the Philippines to learn because it's cheaper. They, they, you know, they, they can't learn that in their own country. Or they, they won't come over here because it's too expensive. So they'll go to like a country like that because it's, it costs them less to take the, the courses they need to take. They'll get their diplomas out there and then they'll go to another country and get a good job. Alan, Emirates Airlines at their hub in Dubai is always looking for aircraft maintenance operatives. Yeah, Emirates, that sounds like a good uh, good airline company. I've not used them, though, mind you. But a lot of these Middle Eastern uh, ones, uh, Qatar, Qatar Airways was one I was looking at. And then I'm thinking, flipping heck, they are like really high class. And the, I was going to use them. I was going to go on their, their plane. But they, it was Singapore Airlines that they that picked it. They got the better price. And uh, they were a very good airline as well. Uh, Humpalumpus, hello. What do you think about to increase the power of Mondeo Mark V? I don't know if you can do it with that four scan. I haven't got the four scan. You probably can if it's updated. If it's if it's updated enough, but I mean, you can take it to a remap guy who who would be able to put his computer on it and do it for you. If you just want to pay someone to do it, so. Uh, I don't know how to do it in four scan because I haven't got that software. But if, if I wanted to do it, I would just sort of like 
call the remap guy out and get him to come around to you and he'll just pop his laptop on and do it for you and apparently you do you do notice the power difference uh, Renaud hello from France hello how are you I'm the happy owner of a 2004 Ford Focus C-Max 1.8 litre petrol 130,000 miles runs great no issues that's good that's excellent uh, Mr Dave I'm a bit late to party <laughs> better late than never well thank you Dave for stopping by anyway what is the time? It's quarter part. I'm going to call it a night in a minute because this is only ever supposed to be a short, a short one. Because I only wanted to sort of like bang on about this this heat distribution motor on the Mark V, and either tomorrow or Monday I'll stick out a little video, a dedicated little video, just to cover that. So uh, if you do want, to, if you have to do that on your Mark V, then you'll know how to get to, to it, and if you want to tackle it yourself. Ah, uh, first sign of mine was a misfire. Yeah, yeah, because the water goes in where the spark plugs, isn't it? And yeah, I'm about to, to to go again as I need to put Marcus in the shower. The issue is the taxi driver earnings a day's food each day. Yeah, but you've got to understand a lot of people out there driving their motorbikes, ferrying people around, they haven't got qualifications. And if they have, then what are they doing driving a taxi? You know, a ta taxi to me is a stop in between job. Over here, it would be for a lot of people, it's, it's a stop gap between jobs. You would do a bit of taxi, and if you're in a tight spot, that's how it used to be. If you've got qualifications, or diplomas or degrees or whatever on certain subjects you should be able to get a good job and that's what it's all about that's, that's the whole point of taking qualifications after you leave school going to college and university so you can get better qualifications so you can get a better job and you shouldn't end up driving a taxi and if you do end up driving a taxi it's because you're stuck in between jobs and you're doing it just to get yourself by so And the cost of medical. Yeah, well, well, do you know something? I would rather pay for medical than, you know, you take it over here. There isn't much of a national health service at the moment, really. If you go into A&E and you need assistance, who's going to help you? There's probably about a thousand people sat there waiting already to be seen. So uh, my last experience with the NHS in an accident and emergency, we just walked back out the door and went home again because it was a waste of time. I've lost, lost, I've lost faith in everything over here. You know, it's just... That's why so many people, even, even here in, in the UK, why do you think so many people take out private health insurance? Because they can't rely on the National Health Service. They know if they have to go down the route of the National Health Service, they're probably going to be dead or, or whatever's going to fall off them before they get seen to. That's why they go private. So it's the same over there. You have, if you have to get full health, you have to get it. I mean, that's, that's the way it is over there. So it's just another expense. If you've got the money, you may as well get it and put some money into it for years later if you need it. Mm. Hello, Humper Lumper, here over there in Germany. Thank you for dropping into the live stream. Hope you're having a good Saturday night. And the very best of luck with your future plans. Hope to see you in the Philippines, mate. You too, Adrian. I'm sure if uh, you're out there and, well, when, when you are, and if I'm out there at the same time, then uh, I do intend over the course of time to sort of like travel around a bit because there's, there's so much to see and I'll effectively be retired. So... I'll have a lot of time on my hands, so we'll, we'll pick certain weeks of the or months of the year where we'll say at this week, this week in this certain month, then we'll go for a trip over here, and then we'll go for a trip over there, and we'll do stuff, and we'll go and see places. So, uh, 
you know it's, it's like there's there's people that i watch on on youtube that that i would i would go and visit you know just to say hello you know sometimes people come to me at the garage and, and say hello oh I, you know because they've never met me they've seen me on youtube and they come and meet me so that, that i feel the same about other people I, there's people i want to meet so i'm i'm, I'm all up for that we'll, we'll go and have a drink underneath a coconut tree or <laughs> It'd be great. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks, Adrian. Uh, sir. We'll hold you to that one. Do you prefer working in the old garage or the new place? I'll be honest with you, I like the old place. I like the old place better because there was more room to move around. It was more interesting in there. Where I am now, it's just the garage and a ramp. And there's a little bit of a garage at the back, but it's, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same as it used to be. I, I used to have a shit ton of fun down the other garage, especially making the videos. There was just so much more space to move around in that garage, especially when you used to go walking through the offices and all that, and out in the yard and all that. It's, it's just the, the, the magic has gone, if you know what I mean, up this car sales. I mean, the car sales is okay, but it's just it just isn't the same as it used to be. Uh, Mr. Dave, just thinking about my old Mark II Mondeo, if I remember rightly, the engine was named Endura. Yeah. It was the 1.8 TDI, the first ones <coughs> that come out. Then then the later ones, the, the, they called them Enduras, didn't they? I think it was TDCI, but they made they called them Enduras. Uh, it was just another fancy name because they got a few more emission-related bullshit on them. But <laughs> yeah, I remember that on the on the, the actual cast aluminium rocker cover, they would have Endura, wouldn't they? Wrote on it. Agreed UK has had its day. It's sad really. It is. It is because this used to be a great country. It used to be lovely here. But over the last seven years it's just going downhill it's not so much that it's, it's the fact that the things the events that have happened over them years i think so many people have now seen the disconnect between the government and the, the ordinary people and it's it's just shocking that the lies that are being told by the government and the media you know the bbc and all this it's like you get to the point where you just realise that you can't you can't take anything these people tell you anymore. So uh, you just lose faith in the whole establishment. So, uh, it all needs ripping down and redoing again. It's uh, it's not like it used to be. It's a shame because I love this country, but I just the way it's being run by you know the, these. You know, even the, the people in government, you know, they're all bought and paid for, really, aren't they? There's higher powers, you know, puppeteers pulling their strings. Uh, thanks for tonight's live. Thank you, Paul, for joining anyway. I'm going to call it a night now because uh, I didn't want this one to run too long because it was only about this, this bloody motor. So anyway, now you know, and I'll get the video out probably tomorrow or Monday. So if anyone has actually got this heat distribution problem on your Mark V, then uh, you'd have a better idea of, of what's actually causing it and how to fix it. Uh, in Germany, public health service is also very bad. The treatment is better if you have a private insurance, but the service is getting worse. Yeah. The national health over here used to be great. But I think the problem is, oh, I could be wrong here, but it's, it's like there's too many people in this country now. There are too many people coming into this country all the time and the National Health Service can't cope. It's not fit for purpose anymore. So uh, it's, it's all falling apart. It could be great still if it was done right.
Alan, you will never look back on the UK. I can't wait to leave the UK. Yeah, the, the same here. When I walk down the street, I mean, I've got I've got weeks. Well, I've got I've got, got three or four months left of here. And when I walk down the street, I'm like, I don't want to be here. I just don't want to be here no more. That's that's the way I feel. Everything, I just look around me and I'm thinking, it's, I just don't like it anymore. But uh, we shall see. Anyway, Adrian, don't worry about that. We've got to have a beer together one day. So <laughs> when, when, when we're both over there, I'll meet up with you, definitely. Uh, time to go over to Big Clive Live. Oh, he starts at half past nine, doesn't he? Well, I'm going to call it a day now. So uh, that'll be me off the air. Uh, cheers, Curbside Classics. Thanks for joining the live stream. Uh, can Can. All the best. Thank you, Can Can. You too. Have a good evening and a good bank holiday weekend. Fellow Detractor. Take care, everyone, and have a wonderful weekend. You too, fellow Detractor. Have a good one. I'm trying to get through these comments quick. We're on a roll. <laughs> What is the country? What, what is the country? Do you want to move? It's, it's the Philippines. That's where I'm going. Cheers, Dave. Have a good weekend. Good night, Adrian. See you later. That's it. We're done. I'm off air. Thank you, everybody, for joining the live stream. I will see you all in the next one. Have a good bank holiday weekend, everybody. And see you later.